Now, he is the man behind the New York trilogy, as well as a string of others, uh, noirish existentialist novels about lonely writers, outsiders, and down and outers that have been a huge hit, notably across Europe. Now, though, Paul Auster, a prolific American novelist, has died of complications from lung cancer at the age of 77, surrounded by his family. His uh, more than 30 books in all have been translated, would you believe, into more than 40 different languages. One uh, big reader is France 24's Oliver Farry, and he's joining me uh, here on set once again. Oliver, this is uh, the loss, isn't it, of a real literary giant? Yeah, it's very much a cliche to say it, but Paul Astor was um, one of a kind, and not so much uh, because of what he wrote. There are plenty of more experimentally inclined writers in the US, but he was probably the only one or one of the very few that actually managed to make bestsellers out of it. And of course, you mentioned there the New York Trilogy, the 1989 novel, which was the one that really propelled him into the international limelight. Um, he I, was probably not quite as decorated as other writers that of his old generation or like his uh, fellow native of New York, New, New Jersey, uh, Philip Roth. Uh, Oster was often uh, the, the bridesmaid rather than the bride in international awards. He did win the Penn Faulkner Award in 1991 for his novel, The, the Music of Chads. His, his novels were, as I said, slightly experimental. They, um, they tended to focus on things that an awful lot of American writers weren't really looking at, very inflected by European fiction, uh, with good reason, because he started off as a translator from French. Uh, in his own life, he was also a screenwriter and a filmmaker. He made three films. They weren't quite up to the standard of his books, it has to be said. He also, in recent times, he was hit by tragedy. He lost his son to a drug overdose in uh, 2022, just 10 days after uh, the, um, his granddaughter, the, uh, the, do the infant child of that son, had died accidentally of, uh, from consuming fentanyl and heroin uh, that the son was using. And what's fascinating about him as well, I mean, of course he's well known in the US, he's well known in the UK, other Anglo countries, but he's so well known, isn't he, across Europe and, and here in France as well. That's right. And um, it's not unusual for American writers to be more popular in France than in the US, but Paul Oster was rare in that he was he's one of the few American writers who could actually speak to the French in their own language. He was a fluid French speaker. I, I saw him speak uh, about 12, 13 years ago to an audience of about 500 people in Paris. He spoke excellent French, uh, completely mastered it for, you know, any, any type of intellectual discourse. As I said, he started off translating fr uh, French literature when he lived in Paris in the 1980s. His then wife, Lydia Davis, is also a, 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 an acclaimed American writer and a translator from the French too. The French loved him. Uh, uh, right now, if you walk in Paris on the metro or in the streets, you will see advertisements for his last novel, Baumgartner, which has just been translated into French. Um, he was also given a made a commander of the Order of Arts and Letters, which is France's highest decoration for, uh, um, for uh, cultural figures. So, uh, as I said, he's somebody that uh, the French loved back uh, very, very much for the fact that he was able to speak their language to him. But, of course, they appreciated his, uh, his novels too, which ironically, started off very much inflected and influenced by the French literature that he grew up reading himself. Oliver, thanks very much. Uh, France 24's Oliver Ferry. Yeah, it's been fascinating to see the reaction up in the newsroom.